Hello everyone, this is Cynthia once again on Embracing His Word. Well, this is video number four because I talked in depth about uh, your very first point, which is repentance. I want to continue with the points for you to be able to break free from ungodly soul ties. So have you ever been in a relationship and you thought, you know, this is the person for me. This is the person that we will eventually get married. But it turned out to be a toxic relationship. So today we're discussing how to break free from ungodly soul ties. So I'm continuing on with my points. Point number two, you can go back to video number three and review um, the very first point. But this is point number two, which is renunciation what does the word renunciation mean it's a very important step because renunciation means to reject and stop using the second definition is, is to give up refuse or resign usually by formal declaration renouncing his errors so after repentance, you need to verbally declare you will no longer do the things that you used to do. And you declare to the enemy, I will no longer take part in your evil works. And so that is renunciation. You have a, a complete turnaround from what you used to do. And Matthew 16, 24, verse 24 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to follow me, let him renounce self and take up his cross, and so be my follower. And one of the biggest problems um, in renunciation is that a lot of times uh, people do not want to stop doing the things that they are doing. But here is the word of God. It, what Jesus said, if anyone desires to follow me, let him renounce self, take up his cross, and so be my follower. Did Jesus say it would be easy? No, but it's, it all involves a commitment to the Lord God Almighty. Are you willing to be committed? Are you willing to renounce the wicked works of the enemy? And 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 says, But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So right here, this scripture also uh, says that we should renounce the hidden things of shame. Are there things in your life that you're ashamed of? And so if, if those are there are things of, of sin and iniquity that you have been practicing, this is the time, this is the moment for you to renounce those hidden things of shame and not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully. And so uh, 2 Timothy, Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 19, Yet God's solid foundation stands unmoved bearing this inscription the lord knows those who really belong to him and this also let everyone who names the name of the lord renounce all wickedness so this is a very powerful word that the lord knows those who really belong to him do you want to stand before the lord and hear him say well hear him say well done thou good and faithful servant so the word says that we are to let everyone who names the name of the Lord renounce all wickedness. And so we can involve ourselves in the things of this world that, um, that opens the door to wickedness. But we want to declare that we belong to the Lord God Almighty. Proverbs 18.21 says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So we want to start speaking death to ungodly soul ties, speaking death uh, to wickedness that the enemy want, us, want to snare and entrap us in. But we want to speak life over ourselves, that we are the son or the daughter of the Lord God Almighty. We will walk as one that is saved and, and living in righteousness and truth. We want to declare what God says about us. Matthew 12, 37 says, 
For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So we want to speak what God says about us in his word. We are loved. We are his beloved. And we want to declare that over ourselves. God loves me. I am worthy because God gave his only son to die for my sins and in my iniquity. I am God's favorite in his eyes. We want to declare that the favor of the Lord surrounds us like a shield. And, and we, we, we will be victorious as we declare the word of God. And so my next point, point number three, that is submit yourself to God and resist the devil. And so the scripture says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's James chapter four, verse seven. So it starts also with us submitting to God, allow God to really work in our hearts and our soul and spirit by renewing our mind unto his, unto his will and purpose for us. Uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 5 verse 1 it says be imitators of God in everything you do for then you will represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters and continue to walk surrender to the extravagant love of Christ for he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us his great love for us was pleasing to God like an aroma of adoration a sweet healing fragrance so, and have nothing to do with sexual immorality, lust, or greed, for you are his holy ones. And let no one be able to accuse you of them in any form. So right here, God is giving us a warning in his word, a commandment. It says, have nothing, have nothing to do with sexual immorality. Have nothing to do with lust or greed, for we are considered God's holy ones. And the, and the scripture goes on further and says, and let no one be able to accuse you of these things in any form. Guard your speech, forsake obscenities and worthless insults. These are nonsensical words that bring disgrace and, un, and are unnecessary. Instead, let worship fill your heart and spill out in your words. So the scripture is giving us a direction on how we should live for the Lord, how we should really submit ourselves to the Lord God Almighty. And so also we have to recognize that we are in a spiritual warfare battle. And so when we submit ourselves to God, and so as we submit ourselves to God, we must also resist. So how do we resist? In order to resist, we must know the word of God. That is how uh, Jesus Christ defeated the enemy in the day of temptation. When the enemy came uh, to present his temptations to Jesus. Jesus used the word because he knew the word. He, he is the word. And so Jesus fought the enemy, resisted the enemy with the word of God because God's word will forever stand. And Ephesians chapter 6 verse uh, 11 says, Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. So we must be aware that we have an accuser. Every time uh, their sin been committed, guess what the devil is doing? He is accusing us before God. So we need to really submit to God, resist the works of the enemy, silence the accuser, Satan. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operate, operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slanderer, for you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. 
So this is an awesome, a powerful word. That, that uh, particular Bible version is the Passion Bible. And so I want you to, to go to Ephesians chapter 6, read that chapter, meditate upon it. Because, you know, oftentimes when we get in, in these ungodly soul ties, um, we need to recognize we're not fighting against that person. We're not fighting against flesh and blood, but we're fighting against a host of wicked a demonic spirit that wants to work against us. So we have to be aware of that. We have to discern, be wise and discerning. And so my next point is forgive that person and forgive yourself. You know, um, there's a quote that people like to quote concerning forgiveness. This quote is by Marion Williamson. She says, unforgiveness is like drinking poison yourself and waiting for the other person to die. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison yourself and waiting for the other person to die. So we want to exercise forgiveness. It is for your benefit. There's a reason why God put it in his word that we are commanded to forgive because he gave he forgave us of the ultimate sin that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sins of the world. So who are we to hold unforgiveness against anyone, regardless of what the situation or the circumstances may be? He has commanded us as believers in Christ to be willing to forgive. And if we choose to disobey and to despise what God says that we should do, then we will pay the penalty because God said he will release the tormentors. Who are the tormentors? Those demonic spirits that torment people in their minds so much to the point that some are sent to mental institutions. Those are the tormentors. And so we don't want to pay the price for uh, hold, choosing to hold unforgiveness toward our um, abusers, those who hurt, those who have wounded us. So Martin Luther King Jr. says, Forgiveness is not an occasional act. It is a constant attitude. So we must always practice uh, with being willing to forgive, being quick to, um, to let things go because the Bible uh, instructs us not to hold on forgiveness. So if you think you're over it, you pretend. So these are some of the signs and symptoms that people may experience. Um, if they're if you're still holding on uh, unforgiveness or anger or resentment towards someone. So these are some of the symptoms you're experiencing bursts of anger. And, and you know, you're walking around, you don't know the reason why you're really still being so angry. And it, it doesn't take much for, for you to just go off. And so those are signs uh, that somewhere you have not forgiven someone. Um, so if you're struggling with unforgiveness, you're likely bottling, bottling up your anger. Oftentimes the person who is the recipient of the inedible outburst is not the person who caused the stress or pain. What to do instead? Be mindful when you start to feel anger building up. Be aware of the source. And what you want to do is, is ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, where is this coming from? And more than likely, you know the reason why you're you're experiencing these outbursts. Is you're angry you, uh, about someone, something that someone did to you or didn't do. So right there is it, a sign that you're holding on forgiveness. You're petty and impulsive. You're, you're desperate to make them understand how you feel. You're compulsive. You're unable to refrain your experiences. And oftentimes uh, people allow the enemy to replay the hurt, the, the uh, pain, what someone said, what someone did, allow the enemy to continue to replay there in their minds. They're not able to get over the memory of it. And so, all, all these are, are signs and symptoms that we really need to take this to the Lord to heal our hurt, to heal our wounds, to take away the memory of it. And another symptom is that you're not taking responsibility for your feelings. Are you putting the blame on someone else? 
find so you find yourself blaming the person you cannot forgive for your feelings maybe you're blaming the weather or even random events and you, you are expecting that person to come to you and ask you for forgiveness or apologize so if you're still holding unforgiveness or bitterness resentment because that person didn't, didn't come to you and and say that they were sorry and apologize that is a sign you need to just release it and let it go it is for your benefit for your divine protection you're experiencing a lot of uh, continual sickness chronic illnesses in your body and so you want to just go before the lord ask holy spirit to examine your heart to reveal any area that you're holding things against someone that has opened the door to chronic sickness and illnesses you're keeping a list of offenses and so if you're keeping a list of offenses or wrongs that is a something there that, that is a sign that you're still holding on to unforgiveness and so and when you've been in a relationship and and you know the relationship has been very toxic and it's time for you to just sever it and cut it off you want to just allow the lord to just pour out his healing balm on your heart and receive the the uh, presence and the anointing of the lord to heal and to restore you and asking the lord to sever and to break off this ungodly soul tie to remove the rem the memory of the bad experiences that you've gone through okay uh point number five put down strongholds and renew the mind so we want to put down strongholds and renew our mind so the, the next point is point number five pulling down strongholds i will share um going to death on and on pulling down strongholds in my next video and so i want you to continue to watch the videos and share the videos and I want you to make sure that you subscribe to my channel, Cynthia Wilson, Embracing His Word. And be blessed and have a wonderful day.